hands up? Who wants to take care of this? I'm just going to point someone out if nobody does it. Crowded. Say what? Crowded. Crowded. No, 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 no. That's not enough. It could be crowded and cold. So the association there, it's, it's, it's insufficient. We need something a bit more. I mean, what kind of, uh, what other kind of situation would be dark and hot and humid? Okay. Haunted. A mine. A mine. A mine. That's a good one. You know, we've, we've even got the projector lights going on. I heard a couple of other ones. Come on, speak up. I dark, dark and hot and humid. <laughs> Don't in the mind. <laughs> You're completely missing the point there, Mimmons. Yeah, okay, no, you get it. Dark. An oven at night time. A what? An oven at night time. An oven at night time. All right, yeah. We're very basic. <laughs> very basic. Maybe it's a stone oven. It's, it's not in use anymore. It still has some residual heat. So, yeah. You don't need to And then the last one is implication, where you encourage inference, where you give a couple of pieces of information that your readers can then piece together to form the narrative, like the chalk outline that we saw earlier. Like you just see, that it's just chalk on the road, there's not even any blood, there's no evidence of what happened, but you understand what happened. You know, a tiny, uh, uh, a tiny coffin this size. That's all you need to see to, 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 to realize that this is about a terrible, terrible tragedy. A child died, and you immediately infer all the emotions and uh, uh, the drama that, uh, that came with that. And next up, I've got an example um, of someone who uses imagery to really great effect, and he really conveys the, the mood. Um, I've taken this example by an author called White Yote. Anyone familiar with his work? I see some nodding. Um, now, this, this guy, he wrote some stories for uh, uh, Fang and Roar. They're two anthologies that uh, we publish over at Bad Dog Books. And I absolutely love everything he's ever written. Um, a lot of the time, it's very simple porn. The next example comes from a story called A Full Service Fox, which immediately tells you what it's about. But it has a fantastic opening line. All the stories always have a fantastic opening line. And I'd like to share that with you now so you can take a look. An ebony ribbon of oil carelessly spilled on a warped, rusted piece of metal. Nevada County Highway RR wound its way haphazardly around crags of ancient stone carvings and in between stands of Joshua Tree. RR stood for Red Rock, a county that found itself lonely in central Nevada, far from any interstate and, consequently, civilization as well. The tall bluff stretched its arch back to the unforgiving sky, blazing away another desert day. Out of shape, You see the tricks that he's using here? I mean, the imagery is really powerful. An ebony ribbon of oil carelessly spilled onto a warped, rusted piece of scrap metal. This isn't necessarily the best example, but it's something that Google Images spat out of. <laughs> so, what's he doing here? Is it sensation? Is it association? Is it implication that he's, that he's employing to convey the emotions that you experience when you hear that piece? Or is it all three? It's, it's kind of all three, right? I mean, he's painting the mental picture that you can immediately mm -hmm. get. You realize through inference that he's not talking about an uh, enemy ribbon of oil carelessly spilled on the reward as a piece of scrap metal. He's talking about a desolate landscape that's cut by this swath of asphalt that's sort of wobbling through the, uh, uh, through the geographic features in order to make it to its destination. But it's a really powerful bit of imagery. So, starting out, before we, before we get into some other examples, do we have any questions in the room? It's all a bunch of very smart people, desperately needing some, some, some candy. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to do this. Candy goes to anyone who asks a sensible question. <laughs> What's a sensible question? <laughs> <laughs> Next. Somebody else was talking a little bit. But you did actually have a question. So as soon as you get it open, this is the second part of your challenge, as soon as you get it open, you get a new candy. My question was, when do we need the candy? That's a sensible question. <laughs> Sorry, mate, I've got to lower my standards here. That's the same question. You get a bit of candy, you get a bit of candy. We're going to run out of candy at this rate, and we're not going to learn anything. All right, now, seriously, when we're talking about uh, imagery, what else, what, what's, what's going through your mind right now? What would you... What is it? Well, in a way, I suppose it depends on what type of story you want. Would you, sort of, would you actually go for the use of metaphor as opposed to simile for the use of um, image association? Um, so for the specific techniques which you can use. Could you describe the distinction between a metaphor and a simile? Because lots of different writers use different uh, definitions. Okay, I would, I would use a simile as a, as a, as a contrast using as or like, basically. As 
I would say, some people also as a metaphor is something a little more direct. So this, this enemy ribbon of oil, what would that be? That would be a metaphor, I would say. I've not heard that distinction. I mean, with, as or like something else, it's it's more of a syntactical construction yeah, than... It's a pretty classic definition of a difference between metaphor and sibling. It's a difference you know, between... Like it, is, it is more syntactic in a lot of ways. It's like this is... Yeah. The room is, the room is like a line. That's correct. If you're the metaphor, the metaphor you're not right. doing that, you're just saying something without that. It was just describing it as if it were a line, but not. All right, fair enough. Um, I don't know that I can, I can, I can give a concrete bit of, uh, <laughs> bit of advice on that terms, but really, it, it kind of depends, for me, it depends much more on the, the, the rhythm and the meter of the sentence that you're in. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a grammatical choice mm -hmm. more than a, 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 than it's about uh, content. Um, like, if you really want to avoid talking about the actual subject, like like he doesn't he doesn't talk about the road until the second half of this sentence. If you think that's more powerful, then do it. And if you think your reader's going to get it, but if you think that it's maybe grasping grasping a bit too far, then you might as well clue them in. I mean, the, you could have swapped the uh, uh, the sentence structure in here. We talked about uh, uh, Nevada County Highway, our, our wine is way haphazardly, da 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 like an ebony ribbon of oil carelessly spilled on poor water rusted piece of scrap metal. I just think it's more beautiful in this order. Um, you get the emotional impact of it much sooner before the information that really you don't really need at this point. This is the opening of the story. Who cares exactly where it takes place? You want to get the reader's attention uh, and you want to put them in the right kind of frame of mind. But that's a good question. Candy goes to him. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. We're actually doing this. <laughs> you can laugh. Anybody else? I saw you with your hand up. I you just scratching your elbow. Well, no, I, more than scratching my elbow on that one. I actually did have a comment on the uh, simile versus metaphor. Similes, I commonly find that you can use it to partially associate something with something else without uh, without including all of the properties of the particular object. If you say something is, like if you say someone is a pig, then you get all of the connotations that are both negative and positive. Mm. When you say someone is like a pig, you're simply uh, stating some attributes rather than all. But then you still have to define which ones. Which is usually part of the, the continued yeah. Part of that, but as soon as you say that something is something else, it's very difficult to uh, go back on your, your on your statement and say, Smart. "Oh, but only in these yeah. in these ways." No, I agree with that. So you would say that a simile is then a bit softer uh, and more malleable because you can create a context and you can say it's like big, and you will understand that it's these and these and these aspects that you're talking about. But yeah, also okay, means yeah, that, a, that a metaphor is a lot stronger when you want very vibrant imagery. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a much sharper knife, so to speak. Yeah, no, I can get beyond that. Should we move on to the next slide? Because I've got a couple of uh, uh, examples um, where we can look at actual imagery because we're talking about what writers can learn from artists. This is a piece by uh, uh, Kamui. Originally, <coughs> right, originally this was the piece, right? Um, and it was expanded to become the cover for, I think this was the cover for New Fables 2010, it's a Sofa Wolf book. Um, he's a digital painter, he's absolutely fantastic. He did the cover for a couple of bad dog books, books including uh, uh, The First Eden City, absolutely magnificent, fucking hilarious. The guy is so full of energy, it's impossible to, to, to contain. But what he does is he creates these really kind of gentle compositions. They, they, they invite you to just sit and stare at it for a while, just explore it. There's not a lot of stress, at least in the, the ones that he draws for himself, the couple of commissions that I've given him for the, the, the covers. They were really dense, and he can do that as well, but he prefers um, a more languid energy. So that's perfect for, uh, uh, for our purposes here, because we're going to look at how um, emotions are evoked through imagery. And this one, well, let's take a look at, at, at what's going on. What's the first thing that you noticed when you, when you looked at this? Call it out. You don't see most of their heads. You don't see their heads? All right, so there's a bit of, what would that be? Would that be a, a mystery that it conveys? Is that a fair way to describe yeah. it? There's mm -hmm. a misdirection, because you can see some of the reflections. 
misdirection, you can see them in the reflection. And then say that's what you use. <laughs> if you're really curious about that. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of intimate, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's kind of private and um, yeah, the reflection is, is, is absolutely beautiful. It really shows a lot more of the, the, the world. It also gives the sensation that there's a, a depth behind it. But if we're looking not at the, the, the artistic uh, um, uh, the artistic merit of the piece, and just concretely at the scene that we see before us, there's water everywhere. It's just rained. Nobody's got a, a got an umbrella. Everyone's just having a good time. So this, I mean, it feels like summer, even though that guy over there is wearing one of uh, Camus' trademark uh, uh, diamond pattern vests. The guy has a fantastic sense of fashion, and he's also very tall and thin. So you'll see that in a lot of his figures, the tall and thin. This guy over here, what is he? What's up with him? What's with the cane? <coughs> He's blind. Okay. It's a blind person's cane. You've got the red stripes that you can that you can see kind of vaguely in there. And he's just walking around, kind of casual, bold as you like. There's a little thing here which I think is flowers, or it might be a little cat with a new No no no, it's flowers, it's flowers, but it's a dog so I'm about to use. Um so what we've got here is a scene that's really quite peaceful and languid. And if we were to describe this in, in, in words, it wouldn't have to be very long, but simply by hitting on the points that you see in here, you know, uh, uh, probably, let's call the two young lovers. I mean, you can see how, how, how cheaply this guy's bending forward, maybe they're having a little kiss, they're doing some grocery shopping, he's hiding an apple, maybe he's going to give it a surprise. It's a very nice, kind of friendly, peaceful kind of scene that you would really kind of love to be a part of. There's, there's another thing that really stands, about, stands out about this. Can you speak up, please? Can you speak up, please? Sorry. The one thing that really stands out to me about the piece 